Well, hello, dear. This is the J Man Show, and my guest today is the wonderful, wonderful actress Kathleen Gotti from General Hospital. Hello, Kathleen. Good to see you on my show today. Hi, Jay. Thank you for having me on your show. It's a pleasure, and I want and I want to make sure we dedicate the show to show to um to to, to Bobby C. who passed away, you know, and to I know because it was a sad tragedy. So, and if, if you want, you can stop by talk about you know your, your experience of working on the show with them, you know, and how I guess th this whole thing affected you. You know, it it started a few uh, several months ago when Annie Wershing passed away, and I didn't work with her, but I heard some wonderful things about her, and. Um, she passed, you know, and she was, she had been on General Hospital. I loved her in Castle. My husband, I really, really liked her in that. And then Sonia Eddy passed, who was a personal friend. And that was a very hard, um, so th yeah, who played Epiphany. And she was a sweetheart. I mean, she was tough and strong, pretty much her character. Yeah. What you saw on television, that's yeah. who she is in real life. But just this warm, but she also gave warm, beautiful hugs and so much love and they said when you know she hugged you you felt it for a week or a month it was just fantastic and so she was profoundly missed and then shortly after Nika Garland who is um, one of our producers of the show she passed away and that was just like it was overwhelming and yesterday afternoon we heard about Jackie Zeman and it just we're all reeling it's first of all it's it's too much mm -hmm. It's never, it's always too much when anyone passes, doesn't yeah. matter how old, how young, you know, from what walks of life, if it's your family or your pet dog, you know, or something, it's like, these are people or yeah. animals that have meant so much to us and, and love, it's all about love. And yeah. Jackie Zeman is love, you know, she, she was just kind and warm and no attitude and just professional and a sweetheart and you know, lovely actress and, and huge fan base. And people have known her for 45 years. It's, it's part of the family yes. of the, the General Hospital fabric, the mm -hmm. community. And to lose her, it's hard. To lose each each of those people is hard, but especially, I'd be last, because it's so fresh, yeah. we're still today, we're just, you know, the internet's blowing up and we're just yeah. trying to deal with it. And it's, it's un, unfathomable, you know, so, Anyway, I just want to make a toast to all those four. I absolutely you know. I love you. I love you too. I hope you guys are happy. I hope you are all free from pain, you know, mercy and comfort and glad it's came that my death understand how you feel. Because I can, because I know what's like blue something, because my mother passed away and I was passed away so years ago of a heart attack. So I know, I know how you feel, you know. So, you know, yeah. Yeah, even if you expect it, you know, my mother passed when I was about 30. 30 couple 32 years ago, I think. Yeah, God. 32 years. And it, it was just, even though she'd been sick for a while and and I was with her and just watching her slowly deteriorate. But when she passed, I wasn't ready. Mm -hmm. You know, she needed to go because there's too much suffering with cancer and everything. But it was just, I wasn't ready. Yeah. I'm never ready. I'm still not ready for her to go, to be gone, you know. And, and mm -hmm. people reach out and they, I think that's one of the beautiful things about our job is that people reach out and say, you know, I've been going through cancer treatment or I just lost a parent or a child or a spouse, something tragic, even a, like I said, even a pet, these are very painful losses. And, and they say, thank you for that half hour or an hour. You know, you made me laugh. You made me cry. You made me forget. And it's, it's such an honor to be able to do that, yes. that, you know, that makes the job so much more interesting and exciting and, and important that, mm -hmm. We have lifted up people for half an hour or an hour, whatever it is, you know, that you're on screen or the show and people yes. say, thank you. You made me forget. And that's, that's just so powerful. And I'm like that too. What I'm, I'm a, I love to perform, mm -hmm. but I, I love to be an, an audience member and watch a show. And I get it. Like I used to I grew up with Carol Burnett and Lucille Ball and I dream genie, you know, with Barbara Eden and all these people that just made me, you know, it's not that I was suffering as a kid, but you know, when you're, you're, you, you're, you're struggling with yourself and you're struggling with the family and you're struggling with, there's so many struggles, you know, and are trying to find ourselves. And, and for that one hour, they made me laugh or cry. They may, inspired me. And so I understand that. I understand how important it is. And I think that's why I love to be an actress, many reasons, but that's one particularly where there's actually result and joy that we can do. And that means everything. Yeah, I always feel that, you know, when with you and with the acting, you can come with some somebody else, you know, and, and we see that, you know, and that makes us feel like that we can achieve our dreams our dreams and 
it, it gives us a sense of hope, you know, that, you know, that whatever's going on, you know, out here, we can maybe escape, escape for a bit and just, you know, watch you people act, you know, and it's like we understand, it's like we get how you feel, you know, so you know, I get you, you get, you get me, so, you know, and yeah. It's a big responsibility. I take it very seriously. And I, I spend every second I can to make it as funny yeah. as I can or as, you know, poignant as I can or, or as emotional or something to draw people into. I would say we're, I say this all the time, so forgive me if I sound whoever's listening <laughs> redundant, but we are, we are tour guides to people's emotions and we take you on a trip. And I really take that very seriously. That's, that's, that's a great honor, privilege. Yes, and it's a great honor watching you, you know, watching you on go or on on Channel Hospital growing up. You know, I remember watching you as a kid, it's like wow, you know. So and just the honor to actually talk to you and and have have, have on my show. And like I said, my now, wait a minute, I've only been on ten and a half years. Don't make me older than. Okay, okay. Okay. <laughs> I mean, I the I could have started when I was you know younger, but um, I've only been there ten and a half years. So you were watching me as a kid. I'm not sure, you know. Maybe, maybe, maybe the show, the maybe. show you're watching as a kid. Sorry. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But anyway, my 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 goal was to go to go to your mother. I know how it's like was a was a parent, you know. And I'm I'm just not ready to to let my mother's fear go because I miss her so much. So I know how you feel, you know. Just I totally understand. And you know, a lot. It's interesting too, since you know Jackie passed yesterday, and people are writing. I used to love you know on social media. I used to watch, but with my mom. And she passed like two years ago or something. I can't watch anymore. I totally understand. And other people said, you know what? I am carrying on the tradition for my mom. And in my, you know, it's my heart. I talk to her. I think of her. It makes me, you know, I have a glass of wine in my soul. And I do that with my mom. I talk to her all the time. Like I said, she's been gone 32 years, but she's with me all the time. You know, in fact, when I work, sorry, <laughs> many times right yeah. before I go on set, I go, come on, mom. Yeah. Mom and Dad, let's go. Let's do this together. I know how you feel, cause cause my, my mother and I always love Disney World, so I can, you know, so I, every time I go there, I, 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 I can feel a spirit, you know. I'm having me. Yes. It's like that was that was our favorite place, you know. And we actually we actually uh, moved to Florida when she passed away on Tampa. It's like, you know, so it's like whenever I'm in Florida, I was the day day my mom, you know, cause it was a happy time for us. Now. Yeah. You know, so yeah, and I and yeah, I, I yeah, I mean, I, I kind of cried too, you know, because I miss my mom. You know, it's like sure, them. it's it's again something you share, you know, with someone, a family member, a friend. We have people that you know are best friends, and they they've moved away, but they, every day they call and they talk, you know, while they're watching the show, or they'll talk after the show, and then they compare. It's it's something. It's really cool that we're part of such a you know I'm part of such a legacy that that the show is part of such a huge community, you know, and and and. Yeah, it's it's really fantastic that people share that because it it is, his you know it is history, mm -hmm. yes, sixty yes. years of you know, history of you know being in your living room, and I love doing events when we get to go and meet the fans or social media, you know, however it is, just some kind of interaction because they know us, but now we get to know them, the the fans, how long they've been watching, who they've been watching with. It's it means so much, you know, it really does. It means a lot to us. Yes, I mean, because because I, I I want to see him Boston, but I was so sick, you know. But um, is there any chance you might come you might come out to Boston or I'll do it up in New Jersey? You guys don't. Well, still... I was just there this, you know, last yeah. weekend. I was just there with uh, Charles Shaughnessy, who plays Victor, uh -huh. and and Marcus Colomo, who you know who played Nicholas. I was just there a few weeks ago, or or this past weekend, and then I was there a couple of months ago with Kelly T. Bo, who played my daughter. So you need to watch social media more because I'm doing a lot of events. I'll be back again in November okay. with uh, Risha Dorkin, who plays Amy, um, Marcus Sam Mark Samuel, who played, not Marcus, I'm sorry, Mark Samuel, who plays um, Felix, myself, and Ian Buchanan, who played Duke. So we're, we're going to be coming out there again. You just Okay. follow my social media and you'll see it i post i'm i'm, I'm a shameless self-promoter you know promoting these events but it's like how else can will you guys know so i just promote it all the time on social media so just keep following okay. and then maybe you know maybe some other places too but right now okay. we're, we're definitely coming we you know new york boston staten island philadelphia new jersey that's that's our our hang right now so okay so you're definitely coming back to, back to, back to boston in, in november right november Okay, okay. 
uh, for almost all be the uh, let's see it. absolutely okay yeah so um so my guess next next question to you is 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 what inspires you what what gives what you inspiration to do what you do well i think i touched on those things you know um i come from a creative family you know pretty I almost say crazy, somewhat crazy, but, and people know this, but I, I say my father was a symphony conductor, my mother was an opera singer, so I grew up with music, and the music inspires me, inspired me, and I still use it as a tool, but I wanted to be a ballet dancer in the music, I just wanted to express myself, yeah. and then, you know, so that was, that was a big part of it, and then, as I said, all these people, wonderful people, like Carol Burnett, yeah. we would sit around in the living room and watch her just be funny and it was so inspiring and the joy she gave us and the laughter that we had it was like that's the best thing i i think someone said to me what's you know what makes me the happiest and i would say the happiest thing is when i'm laughing next to my husband we're watching something we're laughing that's like the highlight of my life and to be able to make people laugh or other things too but specifically you know laughing it's it's such a such a special privilege so i'm inspired by the viewers what they like and what they need and the results you know, how they feel about that, you know, that relationship we have together, a symbiotic relationship with the viewers. I'm inspired by people that I grew up with. I'm inspired by music. I'm inspired by my parents, you know, by what yes. they did and, and how important, you know, my father was not arrogant. Both my parents were very humble and very successful in their, in what they did. And they were like art, you know, music and performing, it's an art form. It's not about being famous. And they said the more people who are, the bigger somebody is, the more fame, you know, the more the more talented they are, the more humble they are. The less talented, the bigger the ego. Yeah. And so I grew up that, you know, that that's really important to just do the work, focus on the work, not on the other stuff. Because celebrity, I, I went for some physical therapy for my knee the other day and they went, uh -huh. oh, celebrity here. And I went, I'm no celebrity. I'm a working actor. I mean, I appreciate it in a, in a certain world, I guess. I said, but it's not about that. It's really about the work, mm -hmm. you know, so you, you get caught up in all that. It's like, it's not about that. It's about the work, doing good quality work and connecting with the, the audience. Yeah. So I'm inspired by all of that. That's what inspires me to continue on to do good work, to make people laugh and cry and, you know, huh? all that stuff. Oh, yeah, that's definitely a good answer, you know. And like I said, I mean, I'm also inspired, I'm also inspired, inspired by music. I, I mean, I love music myself, you know. I'm, I sing, I sing, you know. Are you singing in a choir? Do you sing in a choir? Well, I actually grew up singing in a church, a model, a, a mind temple, and I, I, as a kid, and I always wanted to be a, you know, a singer, you know. I, as I got older, I, I made some songs about with, 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 with my magic, um, a lot of pulled, a lot of pulled bits for songs, you know. And I guess I guess I don't see one hand at, at, at the movie. I guess I don't at, at the singing hand, you know. But, yeah. That's great. Yeah, singing. I I studied a lot of singing and I performed a lot of musicals and things like that. But the, remember when my singing teacher said it's healing. Yes. You should sing, not just to perform, but sing because it's healing. And there are times I'm driving in the freeway or somewhere, you know, just driving around, and I go, I need to sing. Mm -hmm. And I'll start. I'll do a vocal warm up. I'll sing or sing along with the radio, and it does feel good. It's just some something that's in your heart. Yes, I definitely understand that. Because you know, singing, you know, last time songs really touches me and inspires me. So I definitely agree, you know. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. And so, have you ever wanted to be, have, have you ever, 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 ever wanted, wanted to sing professionally? I was a professional singer. Oh, yeah. That's right. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yes. I did a lot of musical theater. I had a nightclub show, I had a one woman show. Um, this was in New York when I lived there and worked there. I lived in Hungary for six years and I did a lot of cabaret. I was a lead in a couple of shows where I was singing, murder mysteries, singing a cabaret show. So it was a lot of fun. So I've done a lot of that. And um, yeah, I really love it. But uh, but I also realized that I needed to make a decent living. And being a singer is, you know, maybe a handful of people are, you know, big shots to make a lot of money. And and the rest of the people just do it because they love it. And I was doing nightclub acts for 50 bucks, 100 bucks. I went, can't really pay rent with yeah. that. So I just focused on, you know, it's, we call it legit stuff, theater, mm -hmm. you know, not, well, I did a lot of theater, but that doesn't pay either unless you're a superstar. Um, and I did a lot, you know, so I've done a lot of film and television. That's my focus because that, that'll pay the bills, mm -hmm. which I'm grateful for. But uh, music to me, when I got to do some of the nurses balls and I got to sing, <laughs> thank you. Frank Valentini, thank you, because it's just, I, you know, it's because I trained as a dancer, I trained as a singer, I performed as in musical theater, 
you know, to be a triple threat, if you will. And, and after a while, because I focused on just the, you know, straight television and film, I, I, I miss that, you know, and again, I come from a musical background. So music, it was just such a huge part of my upbringing. So when I have a chance to sing, I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, it really, it's really exciting. That's good. And I also see, I also see that, that, that you're a kitchen Zoom event on, on May 24th, May, May right? Kitchen Zoom event, you know. Yes, yeah. I've been doing Zoom for about a little over a year. And my 11th Zoom, Kitchen Zoom, is going to be on um, May 21st from 7 to 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So if you're on the West Coast, like I am, then it's 4 till, four, four till 6. Um, and I, I, all the information is at unclevinnies.com. Maybe it's, you put it on your um, the website so people can click on it and, and get there. And um, yes, I had a restaurant in, in Europe, in Hungary, for several years. Wow. And a bakery, wholesale bakery, cookies, cakes, everything. I love to cook. I love to bake. Mm -hmm. I try not to eat it. I just like to feed people because if I eat it, I'm oh, too much. Not good. Won't fit in my costume and I'll get, you know in trouble so but i do i do really enjoy uh cooking for people and and baking especially i think i come from four generations of bakers okay. my father was a symphony conductor but his father was a baker his grandfather was a baker. you know they had like 30 bakeries in in romania and hungary so it's, it's kind of in my blood i guess you could say so i had the restaurant i had the bakery business and i just really enjoy it and i so i had these zoom cooking shows called gaddy's kitchen and every couple of months, and this time we're going to do some some really fun spring summery kind of food, and of course a dessert and a cocktail. And if anybody wants any information, go to at unclevinniescomedyclub.com. You'll see it all over my social media. Um, on Instagram, I'm at Gatti Tweets, G A T I T W E E T S. But you can look up Kathleen Gatti, and you'll see me everywhere. And I also have oh wow these, these baseball caps. And aprons, but right now the baseball cap, and I autograph it under here, and it's also the information is there as well. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. That's a cool hat. <laughs> yeah. Give me your address, I'll send you one. Okay, that's I promise I will. I can't wait to order that. Yeah. So, so what, what do, what do, 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 learning to cook Hungarian food. We didn't eat Hungarian all the time, but a lot of times. So I love to cook Hungarian food. And also my husband, Michael, his mother's side of the family is Lebanese and she was a great cook. And he said his grandmother too. So I love to, he loves to eat, you know, Lebanese food anytime. So I make it up and, you know, make him stuff and he's so happy. So I, I definitely love Lebanese food. I'm from Canada. I was made in Hungary, as I say, but I was born in Canada. I grew up there. And this time there's going to be some fun Canadian things that are Kind of have a European international vibe, but I think people like it. I have some specific dessert that happens to be only Canadian, okay. and I'm excited to present that and to and we're gonna have a cocktail and we're gonna make it entree. So it's gonna be fun. Um, I hope. Oh, yeah. well. And but it's not just really about the food because people are like, I don't cook. I don't. You know, I'm just by myself. I don't cook or something. It's secondary. The main thing is we talk. You guys bring questions about General Hospital your life, you know, we share stories. I try to tell some stories from my past. I, I'm in the middle of writing a cookbook, as you can see all that, that's all my yeah. recipes. And that's oh. from actually, that is from the menu for my restaurant. But oh. there's all kind of, you know, I kind of keeping a, a, a path of that. And um, so I, I keep track, I've been working on the cookbook. And every time, you know, I make something, it's like, oh, you know, and this is a story. So it's called My Life and Recipes. And each recipe, has meaning. It came from my childhood, from something. It's not just a random recipe. They're very specific. It's kind of interesting how people remember things. Yeah. I, you know, <laughs> Michael, he'll he'll remember it by the wives that he was married to before me. I remember something by the food I ate. <laughs> <laughs> so we have different experiences, yeah. but but um, so we always laugh about that. But it's you know things speak to me like there was an experience. This you know this roast chicken reminds me of my parents, and then there's you know some experience that we were there, or or this recipe was from a neighbor when I was ten, and they knew that I loved it, so that, you yeah. know I learned how to make it. So there's there's each recipe has a story, and also I talk about stories about what's going on in General Hospital. You know, you meet it. so it's it's really a nice way. To, you know, a lot of people can't travel; it's too expensive. 
they're not able to physically, yeah. whatever, for whatever reasons, but they can be in my kitchen for two hours and just hang out and we can talk and it's very personal. I, I mean, I feel like the people that show up all, you know, all the time and new people all the time, it's, it's very personal. We have a really fun relationship. I think there are a few tickets left. It's pretty much sold out, I think, but there might be a couple of tickets left if they go at unclevinniescomedyclub.com or on my social media, they can see the, the link and there might be, like I said, I think there's a couple of tickets left in different categories that you can join in. So, but it's fun. I, I absolutely love it. I only do it every couple of months when I have time, but I really love it. It's just, it's another way to connect to the fans. To me, going to these events is like the highlight, you know, meeting all these people, hugging them, talking to them. But the next thing is that, you know, on Zoom where you really have that connection going and it's really fun. It's very special to me. Yeah, it's definitely sounds like 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 a wonderful time, you know. I can I can wait wait to, to wait to taste your roasted chicken. I love chicken. Chicken. Um, yeah, I love roasted chicken. I can wait to know. So yeah. Well, the next thing I'm making has chicken in it, so. <laughs> that sounds good. Yeah. I mean, cheers. Thank you. Yeah, cheers. Up. Cheers. Just, just, yeah, just, Look yeah. at that Canada Dry. That's where I was born. That Canada. Came. Ah uh, yeah. Okay. So my next question is, what advice do you, what advice can you give artists that want to be that want to be uh, an actress? You know, that want to be a singer. Well, what advice can you give them? Oof. You know what? I get this question all the time. I get emails, social media connect. You know, people contact me all the time, and I'll just kind of say a couple of things. First of all, people say, "How do I become a celebrity? Mm -hmm. How do I become famous?" And it's like, I'm not the right person. I'm not a celebrity. I'm not famous. I'm not rich. You know, it's like all these things that people aspire to. Yeah, let me put that hat up. Sorry. Um, this is a question that needs <laughs> no hat. Um, I mean, the bottom line is study. I mean, I went to New York. You know, my early twenties or 20, 20, 21. And I studied and did theater for 10 years. I mean, I, worked, I could have been a doctor with that kind of studying. I worked my ass off to study with every possible teacher, learn different techniques, find out what was right for me, do tons of theater, because theater is amazing. That's where you really learn how to work with actors who are good actors, who are bad actors, working when there's an audience, when there's no audience. Because when we do, for example, General Hospital, there is no audience. You have to know how to feel the part, how to express it, and don't expect, hey, you're great, or yeah. you know, or something. You just have to, or or laughter. It's really hard when you're doing some comedic thing and mm -hmm. there's no response. You're, you're waiting for someone to laugh and you're going, oh, that was good. Or, you know, I need to hit that a little better. And theater teaches you a lot of that. But people are like, you know, I just want to wake up and be a movie star. It's like, I'm sorry, I don't know how to do that. I know how to do work. I know how to, if you work your butt off, and you study and you do your homework and you, you know, you do community theater and you get into local theater, whatever it is, and you work, you will work, mm -hmm. but it takes, you will have a career, but it's, and even that's not guaranteed, but because there's like millions of actors, not tens of thousands, millions. Mm -hmm. And even as I'm, you know, as my career is unfolding and I'm getting older and there's better, you know, sometimes better roles and sometimes less, but it's so, it's a saturated market. And, you, and I'm competing with like super big movie stars because they don't have work either. So people have to be realistic and young people, oh, I want to, I want to, you know, I just want to do what you do. It's like, no, you don't. Mm -hmm. You have no idea how hard it is. And people don't want to do the work. One, you know, you got to study, you got to work, you should go to school, find a really good, you know, program. You can learn stuff online. You could, there's the master class with all these wonderful people like Helen Mirren and all, you know, all kinds of people, but get into a class, do scene study, do cold, you know, cold um, readings, everything, Shakespeare, study everything. So you're well-rounded and you're, you know, able to go do movement, sing, dance, mime. All of that is so important to being a real actor. I mean, and, and you can make a movie on your cell phone. You can just, you know, tape yourself, do all kinds of, you know, there's so many things you can do. And then you have to put together material like, like demo reels. I mean, there's, it's a long process. In my humble opinion, there's always one or two people who are just like, you know, sitting in the soda fountain, as they said in the old days and, you know, smoking a cigarette and someone picks them up and goes, boy, you make a great actor. But most of the 99.999%, you have to do the work. So and even once you get the work, let's say you audition and you get the work, you have, there's so much 
business. It's show business. It's such a big, you've got to market yourself. You've got to meet casting people. You've got to, you know, keep on top of that. It's, it's, and once you get the work, you have to study the work and then you have to perform it and you have to keep your performance level up. Like this job I had, I'm so grateful for, for general hospital, but every time I go every single day, I'm like, I better do a good job or tomorrow I'm not going to have the job. And I get 30 pages to study, 40 pages, 50 pages, 60 pages. I sit at home and it's not just memorizing. People go, well, I can, I can photo, you know, photographic memory. I can just memorize. There's so much more. It's like taking that. And you have, this is where technique comes in learning. What does this mean? What are other characters saying about me? What am I saying about the, you know, there's so many things to do that people are like, I just want to be a movie star. Like I said, I, I'm sorry to go on so long, but people don't understand that this is a serious job that if, you know, as, as they said, if, you know, if you don't want this job, there's like a million people behind you that want it and will get it because they've done the work and mm -hmm. people don't want to hear it. So that was my little soliloquy on how to, you know, how to be an actor, but it's very, it's a long, in my humble opinion, it's, it's a long road, but it's, if you need to act, if you need to express yourself or need to sing, do it. Mm -hmm. You know, but people who come into this business for the wrong reasons, I want to be famous. I'm not sure what I want to do, but I think, you know, it'd be nice to make a lot of money. It's like dream on the days of making a lot of money too in this business are, you know, maybe again, a handful of people will rise to the top and make, you know, the George Clooney's, the Julia Roberts, the Helen Mirren's, Kate Blanchett's, they'll take home the money. The rest of us were in that, you know, next level down or even more levels down, whatever that is. And they don't, they just give the big bucks to the big guys and the rest of us, you know, we make a living. I'm grateful for my living, but it's not, a lot of people are miscon have misconstrued concepts about, you know, being an actor. They're like, Ooh, I'm going to be famous. famous. It's like, <laughs> yeah. Have a nice life. Go, go be a, an influencer, do social media, you know, that kind of stuff. A lot of people just want to be famous like Kim Kardashian or something, then follow that path, study what they've done, whatever it is you want, follow people that you, you know, impress you learn what they've done to get where they are. Mm -hmm. yeah. But the, I'm telling you how I've gotten to where I am. And, and even every time, every time I have a job, a new job or different shows or an audio book, I do a lot of audio books. Each time it's like starting from the beginning, <laughs> you know, doing the work, doing the technique, do you know? So, I mean, again, that's, that's my process. That's all I know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, that's a good answer, you know, cause because like you said, I mean, I, I know point, it's one of the college because because I myself, I, I myself went, went, went to college too. So I got my associate's degree in the arts. So I mean, that was one of the college degree, you know, so after, after, you know, and I, mm -hmm. I, I was got trained, you know, in, 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 you know, film media, a Boston neighborhood, Boston neighborhood network. So I'm trained in film, radio, audio engineering, I don't know, so I can get a job, you know, so I was born, you know. So I saw yeah. my, my personal mother is I would get a college education and, and I did, you know. So yeah education is important yes, and yeah. and it doesn't hurt to have a backup plan you know there's a lot of times people i want to become a famous writer or become a famous director or something great a famous actor or singer doesn't you know that's that's you should follow your dream but sometimes you need a backup plan yes just in case it isn't the right thing or you need to make a living you need to be normal yes. okay that's not the right thing to say because i don't think i'm normal but you know you need to have a balance in life you need to have a personal life whatever that is i'm not saying get married and have kids but you need some balance where you have social you know a world where you're comfortable where you go for hikes or walking or have friends or you spend time with family something that keeps you grounded because there's nothing about this industry that keeps you grounded nothing that that rug can go boom you know so come out from under your feet so you really need to find that balance for, and I've been, that's been my quest my whole life, find the balance. Cause I'm like, wee, cuckoo, you know, it's like work and that study, but you know, it's like, I try to find a balance too. So I, I can appreciate what I'm working, but I can also appreciate being, I want to say normal, having a normal life, you know, cause I think the first 40 years of my life, I didn't do that. It was just like work, 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 work to get somewhere. And, uh, you know, that's a, that's a quest to keep, keep it balanced. And if it means doing something that pays your bills while you're, you know, doing other stuff, that's fine too, but definitely try to be balanced and have a personal foundation of friends, family, whatever it is that, you know, pets, doesn't matter, keep you grounded. Mm -hmm. You need that in this crazy business because there's nothing grounding about this business. I, I can I can understand. So, 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 so how do you do, so how do you do a, 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 a
How, how does rejection you know affect you as, as an actor? Ice cream, yeah. ice cream works. Cookies, no. <laughs> I feel you. Me too. I feel peace. Yeah. You know, I've learned. They, you know, first of all, they say you have to have a, a the skin of a rhinoceros and the heart of a baby. You know, so you have to be so vulnerable inside, but outside you have to be like tough. Rejection is hard for anybody at any level, whatever you're doing. Um, most of the things I auditioned for and I haven't gotten in the past, I've been okay. It's like, all right, you know, it doesn't matter because I know in my group, and I don't want to sound arrogant, but when I'm auditioning, I'm auditioning with 10, 50, 100 other people who are at a certain level, we've achieved a certain level where they trust us to do the work. They like what we do, you know, and all that. But when it comes down to the final decision, it's between me and another girl and she's got red hair and they need a redhead. Or it's between me and five other girls and and they're too tall, I'm too short, I'm too whatever, too young, too old. So it's not an artistic, pers you know, sometimes it is, they're like, I don't like what you did. You, <laughs> Kathleen, you sucked, okay, that's nothing I can do about it. I bring, I try to do the best and, and it's a question of taste a lot of times. Um, or sometimes you happen to look like somebody's ex-wife, not good, you know? <laughs> but so, so a lot of times you have to let go of that, like, what did I do? Why didn't I get it? I mean, and that happens, but I have to say, there've been a handful of roles in my life that I have really, have really kicked my ass that I didn't get it. I was just so sad about that. Uh, you know, it's like, it, I could taste the role that was very close, it was very personal and I didn't get it. And those, those things are hard. It takes me about a day or two to get over that kind of stuff but but initially it's like they didn't you know they didn't like me it's try, it's hard not to take it personally because we are the product it's not like oh well let's see you know here or you don't want to drink you know buy the drink i'm selling well too bad but because we are the product it, it does get personal and you really have to go well they wanted somebody older younger whatever you know whatever that they're looking for and a lot of times, seriously, I have heard it's the hair color. I'm like, are you kidding me? It's like, oh, you were much better. You know, we loved your work so much more, but we needed a, you know, someone with green hair, whatever. And that wasn't you. I'm like, well, where's the green dye? Let's do it. You know, so that kind of stuff is very frustrating. Yes. But again, you have to let it go. It's really hard. You know, they say, let go, let God. You know, it's like a lot of times you just have to let it go and trust the, the, the experience, the universe, you know, God, whatever you believe in. That's hard though. Sometimes it's hard, and most of the time I go next. You know. <laughs> I see. So how did so, so how did COVID affect you? Everything being shut down was that was that hard time for you being being in pandemic? Yes and no. Uh, my husband and I were living in Los Angeles. He retired, okay. I think, right before COVID. Um, and I was you know working, and then all of a sudden everything got shut down for about four or five months. And everything started, it was really interesting transition because everything started to switch to, instead of going to a, somewhat, a casting director's office, you stay at home, you get a camera, you know, you do your audition, we call it a self tape. And now everything started being emailed, you know, you are going through a website, you post your, you know, your, you send your audition, instead of meeting 10 people in a room, all the casting, the producers and everything, you send your audition, you do it at home and you send it in via blue transfer, whatever, some, something. It's good and it's bad because you're not in the room, you can't become three-dimensional, you can only do that. And you don't know, and you're not, you're not getting redirection. Like, Kathleen, could you be a little more dramatic? Could you be funny, you know, something? Can you change that up? Can you do this faster or this this part? Because I won't know the script. Sometimes they'll send you a script, but sometimes you just have the material. And and the director saying goes, you know, can you try this? Because in, in later in the film that you don't know yet, this happened, you know, so it's kind of a preemptive. So that part was really hard, but I like doing my own thing. I like having the privacy of the audition. You can do it a hundred times if you want. When you go to an audition, there's only one take, like General Hospital, one take, boom, moving on, you know, unless there's a technical problem. But um, so I, I love doing that work at home because I feel safe. I guess I'm, you know, I, I like that kind of sense of security to do it like here in my office. I will, you know, do an audition again here. I'll show you against a wall. There's a wall and, you know, I, that's behind me. So I do a self tape. Um, so that part, that's the work part. Lost a lot of friends My during God. COVID. A lot of fans, family fans, you know, that the general hospital fans who became family and friends uh, passed away 
it was extremely painful. And then all that political stuff, you know, this way, that way, do this. It's like, you know, do whatever feels right for you. Everyone just do whatever feels right. You know, I, I chose to to get the vaccines and all the boosters because my Michael is high, high risks with COPD from smoking from 30, 40 years ago. And I don't want to kill him. I mean, this is my life is so value. I value Michael and, and so much that I would do nothing to hurt him. And I'm not going out there in the workforce. And then General Hospital started up. So now I'm going out and I'm meeting people and I'm putting him at risk. So that's that was right for us. If somebody didn't believe in it, that's, you know, they can do whatever they want. So that was it was scary to go back into the workforce, if you will, even though at General Hospital we had COVID tests and stuff like that, but it was still scary to get from A to Z. And it's like, I don't want to kill my husband. So it was a lot of fear in the beginning, a lot. But the positive side that came out is we realized we do not need to live in Los Angeles anymore because I work in Canada, I work in Atlanta, I work in Europe. I mean, I work everywhere. So I can do the self tapes at home. Mm -hmm. I get the job, I get on a plane and fly somewhere or drive somewhere. So we decided to look to move away from Los Angeles and, and Los Angeles is getting crazier and crazier and the traffic is insane and the costs and insurance and taxes. It was like, we're working just to pay all these, you know, stupid, not stupid things, but just, there was no, where's the fun? Mm -hmm. You know, we're getting older. Where's the fun? I mean, all we're just working to pay and, and, um, you know, spending on my husband's social security and his retirement and my salary and, you know, all these things just to pay all these things. So we, we realized that we could actually possibly leave Los Angeles and go live somewhere not too far so I can come into work if, you know, when needed for general hospital. The other stuff can be anywhere in the world. So we sold our house. We moved to Prescott, Arizona mm -hmm. and have never looked back. I just love it here. It's peaceful. And this is what I'm talking about, the balance. We go for hikes. We go walking. There's lovely people around. Um, you know, it's it's a lot more affordable. Mm -hmm. So that's that's really nice. It's a huge perk. We don't have the crazy traffic. When I'm working on General Hospital, in the last few months has been so. I, I spent more time in Los Angeles oh. than at home in Arizona. We'll get in the car. We do a road trip, mm -hmm. and we have the best time. It's like about six and a half, seven hours. We drive to LA, Los Angeles. You know, Michael will see his family and friends and people you work with and I go to work mm -hmm. and then we get in the car as soon as I'm done a couple of days five days ten days two months whatever it is and then we drive you know, we stay in a hotel and we come back and that's you know that and COVID taught us to change our lives and I'm grateful for that like I said it was just tragic to lose so many people we knew and loved excuse me but it really changed opened our eyes to a better quality of life so for that I'm very grateful you know, especially with getting older, it's like I don't need to work every day as much as I love to work. I, you know, I want to enjoy my life. I want to enjoy my husband. I want to enjoy all the things I've worked for, in a personal way. You know, and still work. I love to work, but I, I really learned how to appreciate it. And so, yeah. Well, that's good to hear. You know, because that's good to hear that that, that you're in Arizona. Because I, I have a cousin in Arizona, and so and my uncle's in Arizona too. Yeah. So, like, so, so you're, so you're kind, of, you're kind of close to where I am. You know, Arizona. Yes, like. That's good to hear, you know. If I'm if I'm if I'm over down, maybe maybe we, maybe we can meet, you know. Um, my cousin, my cousin, my cousin lives in Phoenix. Lives in Phoenix, you know. So yeah, nice. yeah, awesome, yeah. Oh wow, I see, yeah. And so um, so what? So what are the projects? So besides your cooking show, what what else? What else do you have do you have coming up this for for, for for the rest of the year? Well, the rest of the year, I have no idea. It's it's a very um. You know what's the word whimsical career you, yeah. you know you, you know work you don't you know tomorrow might be on a plane going to utah for a film i have a couple things in the fire in some other places too um i just finished another audiobook which i love to do okay audiobooks i've done a bunch of those and i just finished this like months and months and months at general hospital you've probably been watching the story unfold and there's still a few more episodes to air and uh, that's been lots of fun and a lot of work and a lot of fun and driving back and forth and um and and that's been really good so right now i'm just excited about the future there's a writer's strike that just started i'm sure you know that uh last week and that's going to affect my workload i think the next few months there's there's some leftover work from people having you know, written stuff general hospital probably has probably a month or two's worth of material i don't know so they call me, I will go running, but I think my storylines have come to somewhat of a, 
culmination, you know, the end with, with Britta um, dying and she had a story. So I, I was there for that. And then Victor Cassadine and he, he's, he left. So, you know, his story, which is just also just coming to an end or came to an end. And um, so we'll just see what the future holds. I'm kind of, I'm just so excited to, to, you know, do new things and general hospital to go back when they're ready for me. And I don't, I love it. I love doing the audiobooks. I love not doing anything, just going for a hike, going for a walk. I, right now I'm excited about the Zoom, May 21st. Um, again, I'll just re repeat that because that's at unclevinniescomedyclub.com. They do my Zooms for me and we all have a good time doing that. I love doing that. So I'm preparing right now. I'm working on the recipes, making sure they're good because they're all in my head and yeah. I have to learn to put from my head onto paper. I, I really work very, um, I'm sure a lot of people do that too, but I learned from my mother. It's like, you taste, you add a little of this, you taste, you add a little of that. Oh, I need about this much flour. That's not how you do a cookbook. That's not how you help people, you know, uh, teach them what you're doing. And also, I just want to say that at the Zoom, after the, and after the Zoom, you will get a PDF of all the recipes, the stories, everything. So you'll have that. It's, you know, so you don't have to be there with a pen going, she say a cup of flour or two, you know, so you don't have, you just sit there, you talk, you bring a cocktail, you know, we'll just talk. Well, there's no booze in here, but <laughs> <you should. laughs> just yeah. but you know, I'm just saying, bring a drink, hang out, we'll talk. And, and that makes me really happy. I really, like I said, I really love connecting with people and I'm doing a bunch of events with uncle Vinny's. We're going to be traveling around. Um, just again, look at my social media. I'm doing an event with um, Camp Dream, mm -hmm. with Lisa Lynch and her group. I'm going with five other actors in uh, the end of end of June, June 24th and 25th. This can be like a murder mystery and a barbecue. It's gonna be really exciting. And there's six actors from different shows. Mm -hmm. So again, you'll see it on my social media. I post shamelessly morning, noon and night. And um, you can find out whatever I'm, you know, my latest updates, just follow me on at gaddytweets.com. Oh, sorry, at Gaddy Tweets, no yeah. doubt. Uh, yeah, I'm, definitely, I'm definitely following you, so I can't wait to see what 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 the future holds for you now. So, okay, so my so my, my, my next question to you is, is kind of serious though. Um, how do you do? Um, how do you deal with racism? Racism, because I know that you know that, that you know the effects, and because I know it, 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 it you know affected me growing up. You know, because of my skin color. So how does this affect you? So how does racism affect you growing up? You know, how does it affect you? In fact, you know, in showbiz, you know, because it's everywhere. I mean, you know, it's sad. It's a, it's a very important question. Um, I don't like to get into my background, but I can say that my parents fled Europe because their families, especially my mothers, were massacred. Mm -hmm. um, in everybody, almost everybody in her family. I have very few relatives left. I grew up, I was taught that, first of all, my sister, her first doll she had was a black doll. I mean, you know, it was fantastic. My parents didn't see color. They they didn't see, and that's how we were brought up. My sister and I, it was just like, forget about racism, forget about hatred, forget of any kind. And, and I am honestly, if somebody says anything about, you know, anything bad, if they badmouth any color, anybody, any, you know, any kind of like women, they badmouth women or they badmouth Jews or they badmouth black people or Asians or India, I'm I'm going to kill them. I, I mean, I will go and, you know, verbally, I will defend to the end. There's no room in life for hatred. There just is not. Life is short. It's a gift. My 98-year-old mother-in-law used to say, honey, life's too short. Mm -hmm. Just enjoy it. And she had a long, you know, beautiful life. It was never enough. She was just a gem. My mother died young and she was a gem. And she was like, you don't waste time hating. It's about love. And, and people just want to hate because they hate their lives. They're angry. They had a bad childhood, whatever it is work on yourself find what it is that you hate and fix it you know we all have prejudices about something you know it's like i don't like blondes i don't like brunettes i don't like you know gays whatever i mean you know it doesn't matter it, whatever it is we all have and i hope i'm not saying anything offensive homosexuals no. No. Best friend was gay and he passed from the same illness my mother did and i just lost two of the most important people to me um so i there's just no room for racial anything any kind of hatred bigotry hatred whatever it is in my heart. And so there isn't any, anything, um, there's no room for that. And again, that's how I was brought up because of, because of what my family went through. And people said to me, you don't understand, you know, what it's like to be hated mm -hmm. for race or whatever. And I'm like, actually I do. 
I do. And I had this conversation. Um, I went on an event and a bunch of us were together and I'm not going to bring up names, but it was a huge discussion. And I said, actually, and they were like, you don't know what's, what it's like, what to be, you know, this. And I was like, actually I do because I grew up and my parents couldn't talk about our past. Couldn't. And, you know, I probably shouldn't say anything, but couldn't talk about our past, wouldn't talk about it, changed our religion, did all this stuff so we would not be traumatized for what they went through. And they, again, it's like, don't we have bigger fish to fry than hating each other? You know, I, I don't mean hippy dippy, let's love each other. You don't, it's chemistry. I don't get along with everyone. They don't like, not everyone likes me. That's okay. But to hate and to destroy someone's life or put them down or make them feel less than, that's, I just, I have no room in my heart for that. I absolutely, you know, and again, if I hear anybody in my circle, I'm not going to start posting things because it gets so political and I can't, I don't even want to get there. I just want to focus on love, on sharing story, on connecting with our fans. I don't like to get into any politics because it's just, it's all bullshit in my humble opinion. Nobody's right in the pol you know, political world. They're both, you know, everyone's just like, ugh, you know, right now. So I, again, I just don't want to get into that. And there's just no no room. Um, I can say one more thing, and I'm, I probably won't say this right, but I used to work. I did a lot of different roles, and now, and it's it's a good thing. But the last maybe ten years, there's been you know minorities have gotten more visibility, and the, and the shows have to hire more minorities, um, and it's great. My workload, you know, my work has gone down because the roles I used to go for, like a supporting role, they have to fill it with you know, Indian, Asian, you know, African-American, trans, homosexual, I mean, something other than a white female. And it's like, I agree. Everyone should have an opportunity. They always should have had an opportunity. And I think that, you know, but on, it's affecting my workload, but I'm going, you know what? I've been fortunate up to here to have a lot of work. And I kind of like it when they say, may the best man win. So mm -hmm. I'll go up against any color, anything. It's like if I'm not right for the role or you don't or, you know, you want to go with a minority, that's fine. I understand. And that has been like probably the last 10 years that's really affected my work. But I, I support it. I think it's tr it's fair. And I'm a working actor, so I can't complain because I do get work. Um, so there was something else I was going to say just slipped my mind, but about the work. But anyway, it's it's. It's a tough subject, you know, but I, I'm really great. Oh, I know what I was going to say, that on television, you see interracial a lot. Every commercial now is only interracial. Every every show, it's only interracial. And you know what? It seems a lot and it seems forced, but it's important because we have to do, we have to show people and kids, especially children are so impressionable. This is the norm. Yes, you can love somebody with a different, you know, they can be the same sex, they can be a different color or a different nationality, different religion, it doesn't matter. We can love each other, you know, and, and I think that's such an important message. So right now it feels like it's very powerfully, you know, in our faces, like, see, here's a black man and a white woman and an Indian man and a, you know, child and two men and two women, you know, it's like whatever it is. And it's okay because this is the norm. This is life and there's all, we're all shapes and sizes and sexual preference and, you know, religions and all that. And, and a Muslim person and a, you know, a Jew dating. I, I think one of my favorite films was Munich, Steven Spielberg directed that many years ago. And um, there's a, there's the, the safe room. And in that room, there's on both sides, one side are Jewish men and the other side are, I, I don't know, Arab, Arab men. And they're looking at each other and they look identical mm -hmm. but this hatred in the middle because one is raised as a jew and the other one's raised as an arab it's like you know or muslim or anyway and and they sit there and it's just such a powerful scene that it's the same we're yeah. all the same it doesn't matter what color what the, you know what religion we are all the same and Again, that's how I was brought up, and I just wish people would stop hating and just, just perpetuating hatred. It's like, what the hell is that? Don't you have anything better to do? Like maybe be kind to someone, help someone out, focus on yourself, fix your problems, go to therapy, whatever it is. Stop hating. Stop killing people. Stop, you know, all this stuff. But then I don't want, again, I don't want to get political. And it, there's just so much mental illness and so much, not just mental illness, but anger. Yeah. And anger from, you know, parents that they learn at home to hate. It's like, 
fix yourself to be a better person. Stop hating. Even if your parents hate it and have bigotry or whatever, racism, stop that. You have a choice. You know, so that's my two cents worth. I get off my soapbox and thank you. <laughs> so that's, but I, I appreciate that. And racism, you know, it's like, yeah. I mean, my father wasn't allowed to join certain clubs in Canada. He wasn't invited, even though he was a famous symphony conductor, but he wasn't allowed because of his, you know, his, his background. And it was like, are you kidding? This is ridiculous. You know, so anyway, that's my two cents worth. Well, and I'm glad you told me that because that's, you know, because that was that that was definitely a wonderful answer. That was a powerful answer, and you see, you see, like a, you see, I can tell you, all, I can tell you, you definitely are a strong woman, and I like that about you. You know, they don't, don't I mean, how you're gonna fight for people? You know, that's wonderful. We need more, we need more people, people like you, and I, and like I said, I applaud you, I respect you, you know, and I just, you know, it means a lot to hear you say that. You know. Thank you again. It's from my upbringing. I, you know, a lot of people have different upbringings, and they. They learn hatred and I learned love. And I don't mean to sound again, hippy dippy, but I learned you can't hate. You don't have to love everyone, but you should make an effort to be decent and not be cruel to people. You know, it's like, I remember because my father was famous. Here's another example. And, you know, in this, in the city where I grew up in Victoria, British Columbia. And I remember one day I was walking home from school, probably 13, 14 years old and five girls ganged up on me. Oh, God. oh your father's famous. And they started hitting me. Okay. It's like, what did I do? I am not responsible that he's famous. And it's a small town and he was a wonderful conductor, but he worked hard to become that conductor. And he and he wanted to bring music to poor people. He wanted to bring music to everybody. He would do summer festivals and do it out in the park for dogs and children and families who had no money. He did so much so that the common person and the poor person, it was not just for a few elite people that would go to the symphony of darling. I sat in the, the box and I, it was a lovely concert. I mean, he brought it for everybody. And, and these stupid girls were like, Oh, you're famous. Your dad's famous. I was like, what? You know, I'll never forget that. It was traumatic. So I can't, I can only imagine in my little, you know, safe little white world with that kind of stuff around me, how hard it must have been and maybe continues to be for people that are, you know, for yourself as a child, you said you had that kind of racial stuff. It's hard, it's hard, you know, but I think a lot of it is to be brought up well and to be, to, you know, I guess there's only so much you can do and if there's hatred around you avoid and go away. My husband, Michael, his mother was Lebanese and he looks spitting image. And he grew up in the South and there were segregated classrooms and he didn't know he was so what is that because they had moved from california his father was in the military and they kept moving every year east coast west coast back and forth and so he kept going to different schools but he said he you know he went for years i think in florida jacksonville and some somewhere else and it was segregated schools and that was and the problem and the, the problem he had because he looked lebanese dark skin dark curly hair and he was you know, he was like, he wouldn't go out at certain times. He'd see people coming towards him to gang up on him. He tried not to engage. I mean, he, he got, he got his share of, of abuse on that. So he learned that, you know, that anyway, it's just not right. It's just not right. But I think we're moving in the right direction. Yeah. You know, I think there's some hope on that again from, you know, social media, television, feature films, that's education, especially for the kids. So I hope, and that's where it starts. And I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry that you that you got you know attacked like that. You know that's that not that's not right. You know, I'm sorry bullied. for anyone who gets bullied, whatever it is. You know, it's just not right. Yeah. I know. I mean, I'm so sorry those girls did that. I mean, I, I mean, I I I would I would love to see, but I I kind of wonder what 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 they what they think think of you now. You know, that's you know because that's you know because you want to be an actress, a wonderful person. I mean, and that's and you know so you know and I actually hope you know that they learn something from you. You know. I think yeah and yeah so 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 on a, so what kind of roles so so what kind of roles do you do 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 you, do you look for i mean uh, did you do do you want to i guess um i guess i'm saying what kind of roles do you do do you like i, I like to play i mean because that's not the same question because what kind of roles do i look for something that pays the bills okay first of all second <laughs> um the kind of roles that really speak to me are about my history my family who you know they left europe and the things that you know world war ii um my grandparents my great grandparents you know things that are in the blood in my blood in my history um you know parents from hungary and romania and anything that's the european stories the german characters 
the Hungarian, you know, all these things that, that have to do with, that they're very close to me. Those, I love period pieces. I like climbing into characters, climbing into another era. Um, I just feel those very powerfully in my soul. And I love doing things with accents, I, a lot of roles. It's just, I feel like it's another layer I can pull on myself and, and climb into that better than Americans. It's like I do, I've done a lot of things with just an American accent, but I always feel a North American, Canadian American accent, but I always feel when I can do an accent, it's just another place I can go to where I become another person. You know, I, I coach actors. Oh, really? I've been coaching for performance, for audition. I, I've done a lot of that. I'm very proud of my students. I, I do, and they're not just students, they're performing. These are already professional actors, a lot of them, or just beginner students. So I do a lot of coaching and yeah. when I have time. And it's really exciting. And I remember when somebody asked me, it's like, well, how can I become somebody else? And I'm like, well, you won't become somebody else because you're bringing yourself to that role. I said, but you will put on layers of physical, you know, the way you stand, what you're wearing, your hair and makeup, the, an accent, possibly the rhythm of your body, you know, the rhythm of, of your speech, your, you know, is this funny? Is this serious? You know, so you bring so many things to create this character. You won't, but you will always bring yourself and people have like, oh, that's stupid. I don't, you know, I want to, I don't like that. It's like, okay, but you are, you know, it's like you see Meryl Streep, she's Meryl Streep in everything, but she layers it with an accent. She layers it with maybe this person's ha 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 funny, you know, and the rhythm is different, the body language, but it's always Meryl Streep. You're not going to change that. Kate Blanchett, on the other hand, morphs into, you know, that's a, that's a very unique creature. She morphs into everything. I mean, she played Bob Dylan, you know. It's like, okay, well, I can't, you know, she really, or Lucille Ball. I mean, it's just amazing what people do. But basically, you know, you, you still bring yourself. Yeah. So. Yeah. I mean, that, that's definitely wonderful to hear. I mean, you know, that these actresses, you know, can play these roles, you know. And so, 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 so you said that you coach, the, so you say that, that, that you coach, that you coach at, actors online. Do you also yes, online? I do. I'm, I've been coaching actors in person, online, on Zoom, on the phone. Uh, I, a, fr uh, a student of mine, a student, one of my, one of my um, actor, actresses I work with, she just did a feature film. She went to Columbia, shot this film. It's gonna be so good, it's called Dominique. I'm so excited, I'm really proud of her. She did a great job and I can't wait to see the, the full film, you know. Oh, yeah. And, and it was, it's just, it's very, it's a real privilege because they bring all the tools, you're not, teaching someone to be an actor, you're just kind of guiding them, suggestions, you know, like maybe take a breath. And each person is a different instrument. Mm -hmm. Every single actor, actress, we're all called actors now. That's politically correct to be an actor. So I'm an actor now, not an actress. But each person brings different qualities. Some people were models. And so then it's a physical thing. Some people are musicians. Well, and they're actors. And, and the then that's a rhythm thing. So it's kind of like, okay, so, you know, someone says something like, I really love you. And you're like, okay, you have to think about that. So instead of just talking, I'm telling them, I'll just say count to four, you know, one, look at them, two, three, four, and then say your line. And, and that, you know, so it depends. And some people are just like, each person, like I said, is different, brings different things to, that you can work with. It's, it's a really exciting process to watch people. And you have to figure out what makes them tick. It's, you know, something they can connect to their dog you know when you're dealing with kids it's like do you have do you have a puppy or a dog i do you know and then you talk to them and about that so it's very interesting so it's i find that fascinating i usually don't have time to coach or teach but sometimes you know people like right now I have some time but most of the time i'm just like oh, i'm studying i don't have time for you know to help other people but every now and then i, I will make the time it's for, it's a very it's a privilege to work with people okay yeah well well, like I said, I mean, I love to work with you sometime, you know, I have to, you know, so if you can, so we can definitely maybe spend the time, time when of you are free, you know, I love to, I love to work with you, you know, so I, I love that very much, you know. Yeah, 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 okay, and so... So, so my, so my next question, my next question to you is, is if, if, if you want to, if, if you want to ask us, what do you think it might be, if you want to ask what do you think, do you think it might be? Um, you know what? It's it's a really good question. And I do these fan events. We travel around and people ask, if you weren't an actress, what would you do? And there's two things. When I was a child, I started playing piano and I thought I'd love to be a concert pianist because, again, I grew, grew up with these amazing soloists at home and the music was, I mean, you know, in our home and then at the, you know, at the theater, the concert hall. And 
and I just thought I just want to perf you know do ballet or or play piano become a classical you know concert pianist and travel around the world um, but I really you know and then I just I'm not the kind of person that can sit on my behind for 14 hours a day and da 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 you know everything so uh, my parents were like she's too wild for this let's <laughs> forget it so I, I just started to dance but I I love animals and I think that's something I would love to you know I, I just can't wait to go to the zoo here. It's like, I keep telling my husband, can we go to the zoo? Can we go to the zoo? He's like, you and animal. I mean, every night I'm on Facebook or Instagram, I'm looking at animals. It's just so peaceful and sweet. And especially there's like dogs that are rehabilitated. It's like, oh, fix that dog that healed them, you know, or something or camels or giraffes. I think it's just something that really intrigues me. And when I first came to Los Angeles, I went, I, I thought, well, how am I going to, you know, how will I make a living if I want starting, you know, my career? And so I wanted to go work at Universal Studios because oh, I thought that'd be great because they have animals and and they had like a two year waiting list and they paid five dollars an hour, wow. and I had to wait two years. So I was like, uh, that's not enough money, and I'm not waiting two years. So, but that would have been something. I think you know, working with animals. There's a great bumper sticker I, I saw years ago, and it said, "The more I get to know people, the more I love my dog." I think that's fabulous and I think a lot of people would agree with me I don't have pets because we travel all the time not home it's not fair it's like having a kid they depend on you they rely on you and if you're not there you know they get they feel and I, I don't want to do that maybe one day when we start traveling around and stuff and working then I'll have a dog or two but mm -hmm. But I loved animals. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, 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 I, I, I actually, actually have have a cat, Gracie. I'll send you a picture. Yeah. Yeah. I'll you, yeah cat, Gracie. Love, I'll, love cats. Yeah. I'll, I'll send you a picture tonight. It's nice to see. Please do. Almost said, well, yeah. Okay. So, okay. So, 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 um, where, 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 what places do you love? Do you love? Do you do, uh, like, like to travel to? Well, I lived in Budapest for six years, and because my family's from there, it's really important place for me. It's a beautiful city. I love the culture, the food, the music, everything speaks to me. It's history, all of it, good and bad, the ugly. It's not a, you know, it's like, oh, what a fun place to go to. You know, it's not like Disneyland. It, there's a lot of history there that's very heavy, including my past, but I love being there and I have a home there. Um, about 30 years ago, Michael and I go back there whenever we can. We haven't been there since before COVID. We've been planning a trip and hopefully we can go back and spend some time there. But I, I love, you know, that has a lot of personal, um, what's the word, pathos, you know, in, emotional value. But we also just like, it's called, I love Europe. I love anything about it because it's all cultural. There's so much music and art and concerts and theater. And, and I just, that makes me so happy because I think my, my lifestyle in Los Angeles was a lot of just working. Um, mm -hmm. You know, it's like, oh, do you want to go see a movie? Okay, so we try to go to the movies like once a week, but you want to go to the concert or see a play? We have to drive two hours. Mm -hmm. You know, every time it's like you really think about it because you're you're driving in you know an hour and a half to two hours to get to work, and another it's only twenty five miles, but sometimes it's two hours to get home or an hour and a half. Mm -hmm. And then you know on week weeknights or weekends, it's like, do you really want to get back in the car? So culturally, your life changes when you're in a place where you drive and drive and drive. It gets just exhausting. Now we're in Prescott, we're really close to Phoenix, a couple hours away. And, you know, if we really want, we just zoom there and see something. But in Hungary, just what, you know, in Budapest, you can walk down the street. Mm -hmm. uh, our condo's on the uh, Broadway of Budapest, mm -hmm. called Mezu, and it's just all these theaters. And we're around the corner from the Opera House and these restaurants and cafes. So there's something very enriching about going to Hungary and, and also all over Europe. It's just beautiful history and everything culturally is just so rich. And then we just love to go to sit on the beach somewhere and eat and drink and relax and forget about everything. So that's kind of in the, we haven't done anything like that since before COVID. We're like, wouldn't that be nice? So yeah, that would be nice. But the lifestyle we have now is so much more relaxed and nice that we're kind of like, why would we go anywhere? <laughs> it's mm -hmm. so beautiful here. <laughs> yeah, I can definitely, you know, because I love the beach. I love the beach. I love the warm sun. I'm just, I'm just trying to move to California fly because I'll because being in Boston okay, but I just buy so much snow, you know, you know. Yeah. I'm not paying for the snow, so yeah. So I'm definitely, so I'm definitely trying to look, look, look. Got a lot of snow in Boston for sure, but then the summer you can go down to the Cape, you can go out and you know see how the white sharks are there and maybe get a nibble or something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm kind of scared of sharks, you know, but you know, but 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 when I when I was at this, well, I actually I actually swim with sharks, you know, at, at, at um. 
this uh, uh, on our uh, Teflon Groom, you some so it was pretty it was pretty amazing. So yeah. But the, but the, but there was a cage seven so but yeah, but I was in the same I was in the same water then. It was pretty it was pretty amazing, but you know, you know, but there was the water was so water was cool, but yeah, but I was someone I'll never on, on forget you know, so yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and yeah, but like but like I said, I mean Boston Boston's okay, but it just you know, it gets cold, so I'm trying to come yeah. up, so yeah, I'm looking for better. Well, I was born in Montreal and grew up there and similar, you know, and then lived in New York for 10 years. So 10 years in Canada, you know, in Montreal. Then we moved to the West Coast, British Columbia, which is much more temperate, not too cold. But then, um, yeah, and, and then New York for 10 years. That was lots of snow, lots of cold, very hot and humid in the summers. So it was like. Yeah, I mean, I definitely understand what you're saying, you know. I mean, yeah. Um, so, yeah. And, um, yeah, so... Um, so have 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 you have you ever gone 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 on a cruise? Gone, gone a... You know what? I'm not a nest. Well, it's interesting you ask because right now we're looking at doing a cruise with a fan event, and just you know, my husband and I are going to go out with 30, 40, 50 people, however many people are interested. And there's you know that that'll be on my social media when we figure out awesome. where and where. Um, but so we're going to do that. But I have actually I I took Michael, my husband, on a surprise cruise for his 60th awesome. birthday. And um, I was, because he doesn't like cruises and I don't like cruises. I mean, that's at the time, now we love them, but I hadn't really been on a cruise and he had only been like a three day thing and he didn't really care for them. So it was a big risk, but I took him from, it was started in Venice and it ended up in Barcelona. It was a two week cruise, a couple of days extra in, in Venice before and a couple of days at the end of Barcelona. But I knew this was the right cruise because he loves Formula One. And on his birthday, November 20th, that particular cruise stopped in Monaco. Mm -hmm. We walked the, the Formula One track. He was just so excited. And we went to the casino and had cocktails because, you know, we had martinis and cocktails you know, stirred, not shaken. It was, a, it was such a, um, a really cool thing. So, and it was fantastic. And every day you're in another city and it's like five countries in two weeks and every day you're in somewhere different. And I, I, Croatia was beautiful and Italy and France and it was fantastic. So yeah, we'll probably do some more of those, but yeah, yeah. I I, make some more money. Yeah. <laughs> I hear you. I, I, took, I, I, my cousin and aunt took a class out of Miami to, 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 um, to uh, Mexico. It was wonderful. You know, the world was beautiful, you know, I mean, you know, so that was three years ago. That was wonderful. Man. But by us, but I, I really want to go on, I, I really want to go, 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 on, go on a Walt Disney World cruise. I love Disney. That's my next cruise. I did a commercial for the Walt, the Disney Cruise Lines yeah. about 20 years ago. And I was one of the parents. It was one of those really cute things. We had two kids, a, a girl and a boy. They're like, I think, six and nine. And we, it was a five, five day cruise, I think. But it was September. We went to shoot September 22nd, the flight. Um, mm -hmm. We flew from, from Los Angeles to Florida, Cape Canaveral is when it, where it left from, but it was 2001. Mm -hmm. It was like 11 days after 9-11 oh, and God. it was strange. Mm -hmm. We had to get to the airport like three, four hours earlier. We flew out there. I mean, most of the people had canceled their, I think the cruise. So we were on this big boat with, you know, with a few families, but it was basically us shooting this commercial and it was like half the people I think had canceled. So it was a very strange experience, but it was really cool. Like Disney, you know, everything was really Disney. This and even your little chicken, you know, nuggets were in the shape of Mickey Mouse. And it was, I love, you know, Minnie and Mickey Mouse. So that's kind of my thing. Yeah. But, yeah. I remember when it happened because I was I was actually working at Boston at the airport when that happened, and it, when it took when they took from when it took from the airport and crashed from from Washington Crashing Center, I was I actually called got caught in, in, in the world that day, and it was, it was a scary day, and I got home like two a.m. Oh yeah, but the whole the whole time I was there, airport was shut down. I was walking one I was walking one way to go, and so it was a scary day, you know. That was just yeah. And then and then and then like and then and we got my mother and I thought of what I thought about this world. You know, um, and 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 the plane was actually the plane was we flew Delta. It was it was practically empty. There were some pilots, that, you know, sitting rush, you know, because you know, no one was, was flying. So it was, so it was like you know, it was just me, my mother, and a couple of pilots flying from Boston to another, another and back to Boston. It's like because people people were canceled fares. It was it was definitely something strange, you know. That's tough. Yeah. So yeah. I guess anyway, I'll ask you one more thing, and then I gotta go because I gotta oh. go feed. Them. Feed the boy and do some. I'm preparing for an audition for a movie. It's my, they, I had a callback. They liked the, I did an audition for Wonder Girl and they're like, really like you, but 
we have a better role. For, we have a different role for you, a better role, a different role. That, so okay. I got to go get ready for that too. Oh, 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 the okay. husband and prepare for my audition so I can do a, a self tape okay. and send it off to you. Okay. Okay. Just one question. So, 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 how can my fan, Jet fans, get in touch with you on social media if you want to reach out to you? Um, I'm on Instagram. I'm on Facebook. I'm on Twitter. Um, Kathleen Gatti, K A T H L E E N, last name Gatti, G A T I. You'll find me on any of those. I promote everything. You'll see all my stuff there. You can send me a message. You know, anything, if you want to find out something, send me a message or, you know, post it. I try to look at every single thing. I don't always have time, but when I do, I do try to respond to every single message I get. Okay. So. Okay, definitely. Okay, and if you want, if you want, I can send you this interview tonight. You know, and, and so you just face it, and, and if you want to post it on YouTube, it, it, it's fine. Okay, so if you want to do it yourself, you know, I'll 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 leave, I'll leave it up, up to you. Okay, I'll see. I can see it. Send you the link, and I'll post it on. I'll post the link for this, you know, video with okay. you. This, you know, our wonderful. It's just been so nice chatting with you, Jay. You're just awesome. Yeah. Thank you for your great questions. It's you know, when you're doing interviews, it's I do a lot of interviews, and it's really nice when someone has you know good questions and interesting questions because then something that you know i feel like i'm saying the same thing all the time which i probably am and i so i apologize to everyone who's heard the same answers over and over and over but thank you for you know a lot of your questions are just new and refreshing so thank you for that appreciate okay. it appreciate okay. your time i appreciate you, you know and what do you want do you want me to send it to, to send it to the we transfer a regular email which is which is better we transfer a, a regular email for the for, for the email. is it just a link for uh, youtube I, 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 I might say it might say as assume it might say soon in soon interview soon you know c o o m soon interview jai bino okay i can send it back if again. it's just a link email it to me if it's a heavy big you know i can't if it's a we transfer I, I won't be able to post that anyway you can send okay. it to me but okay. i would say send me a link, link and i can me. post it and post it please on social media on my you know tag me on everything Okay. And then I'll share it. I'll reshare it. I'll post it. But I don't want to. I don't want to be the one to go. Oh, look! Here's my interview. You know, please, okay. you post it on my. You know, Kathleen Gaddy. Uh, you know, whatever on on Facebook, on Twitter. Are you on Twitter and Instagram? I'm on Twitter, and Instagram. You do you, you, uh, Instagram, uh, Instagram. I'm also on you, 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 YouTube. So I was saying, if you want to. So 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 maybe it's better if I send, if I send you a link and you, and you post it on, on YouTube. You know, is that better? I don't post anything on YouTube. I don't know anything about that. Okay. So you you post on YouTube and and tag me, Kathleen Gaddy. You okay. can put my you know Instagram name Gaddy at Gaddy tweets. I don't okay. know how to do that. Sorry. Okay, okay. I, I can work on saying that, and I'll, I'll do it small. Okay. Right. Well, you can edit this, right? You're gonna take out these. Yes. Okay. Edit talking it. shop. Okay. <laughs> definitely, I definitely appreciate you. Okay, and um... Jay, thank you so much for your great questions. I really appreciate it, and I will talk to you soon. Of course, take care. Yes. So you'll have it. You'll have it tonight. I'm. I'm oh yes. I'm, I'm. I'm. gonna try. I'm gonna try and edit tonight. You know, see what looks special. Then I can. Okay, can... and so it'll come out the next few days somewhere. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Thank, you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. I really, really appreciate it. Thank I'll you. talk to you. Take care.